after seeing the BYD Seagull in the flesh, as in, you know, in the videos, and then finding out what the actual price is going to be, I've got to say I'm very disappointed. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Welcome to 2023. It's going to be an insane year. The Seagull, it's, it's an impressive car. BYD, they are doing some things incredibly well, and that is pumping out volume of electric cars. Now, volume that no one else can match, frankly, in terms of their increase in output month after month after month. This year, it's going to be a fascinating fight between Tesla and BYD for the world crown. But more important than that is this, right? Because 10% of all vehicle sales in 2022 were fully electric, that means these guys have a huge amount of market to disrupt. So they're not really eating each other's sales all that much, if at all. What they're doing is killing companies like Honda, right? Look at Honda's sales. Down, down, down. Subaru, Mazda. They're basically about to kill off the Japanese automotive market. And frankly, they deserve it. They were lazy. They were reticent. They're still being a bit lazy, to be frank, to be fair. And this is the kind of car, the Seagull, which would appeal to millions of Japanese buyers. At this price, well, they're gonna have a hit on their hands, that's for sure. So why am I disappointed? Well, considering the price of this vehicle starts at 8,800 US dollars, frankly, it looks good. You've gotta say, this is probably the best looking small hatchback I've ever seen. It's about the size internally of a Toyota Yaris, but it's 8,800 US dollars. And I'm disappointed because it's not coming to Australia. The Australian distributor has said, no, we don't want to sell this in Australia. We don't think Australians want it. I disagree. EV Direct, come on, bring it to Australia and I'll be your first customer, as long as the price is reasonable, of course. Now, the BBD Seagull electric four-door city car has been seen in pink. This is honestly a color that I hate on cars, but this is the best looking pink car well, the best shade of pink I've ever seen in my life. Personally, when I see a pink car, I think, what were you thinking? Why did you buy that? This though, it's not pink. It's like a, I don't know, it's a, a cool pink. It's something about it that I really like. Now, this version of car will be focused mainly on female customers, says Car News China. Can't say that in Australia, you'll get fired. The Seagull will hit the market in April this year with a price range of 60,000 to 100,000 RMB, meaning 8,800 up to 14,700 US dollars, depending on the model. Now, even though the external outside of this car is actually quite busy looking, I mean, Car News China says it's nice and clean looking, I don't think it is, but they've done an incredibly good job of actually combining all these style elements to make this car look really, really nice. Now, there is one big problem though with the styling. The rear vision to the sides, right? The rear side vision is gonna be horrendous. You can tell, like I've got the BYD at 03, the rear vision is, it's shocking. But this, this is gonna be even worse. But hey, that's something you've gotta be willing to accept if you want a car that looks as good as this. When I say that looks as good as this, I mean, you're probably thinking, you're exaggerating here, mate, you're exaggerating. I don't think I am because Think about it, this is a small car, very hard to make a small, compact, very, very practical car. It's like a small van almost, in terms of the fact that it's got a very, very tiny bonnet. Very hard to make a car like that look good. Now this car reminds me of the Honda Jazz. It's actually, in terms of its practicality, similar to the Jazz, but it looks way better. So this color is actually called Poo Poo Fen, meaning heart beating pink. Now there is a photo of the interior of this car, and I've got to say, it looks significantly better on the inside than my BYD Addo 3, much simpler. It's got the same steering wheel. The steering wheel is quite nice, actually, in all these cars. But I think because it's got less of that ocean theme, more of the kind of normal looking theme, I like it more. Now, let me know what you think. Now, that said, the BYD Seagull's interior does look pretty similar to the BYD Dolphin's interior. It's got that big center touchscreen. It looks like a 15-inch screen, but I'm not sure the exact size of it. Now, speaking of sizes, how big is this car? Well, I'm gonna tell you what it is in millimeters and then I'll give you the inches number. It's 3.8 meters long, so 3,800 millimeters, 1,715 millimeters wide, 
and 1,540 millimeters tall with a wheelbase of 2.5 meters. So that means it's 149 inches long. Not very big, right? Not very long. But because of that really, really small bonnet, you're going to find it's actually going to have the interior size of a car one size bigger, like as in one size class bigger than it. The Seagull, for comparison to the Dolphin, so it's about 15 inches shorter. It's 55 millimeters narrower and 30 millimeters lower. So it's a pretty low car. Now, apparently it doesn't come standard with LED lights, what you've got, like what you've got on the Addo 3. You can get those as an option though. However, one thing that is standard, which I really love, is the BYD Blade Battery. It's a lithium ion phosphate battery pack for those of you who don't know. If you're not aware of the Blade Battery Pack, if you're new to the channel, I'll put some links in the description below to the Blade Battery. You can learn about all the advantages of that battery pack versus other batteries. It's quite a thin battery. And that's what enables BYD to make the basically to make the car low. Because the battery pack in an EV is spreading the weight out over the entire space of the car, you get better weight distribution. You get pretty good handling in EVs, even Chinese cars, which can feel a bit wafty and like they don't have a whole lot of steering feel. You actually still get good handling. My Addo 3, I think, handles quite well. So what size is the battery? Well, apparently it'll be a pack of 30.7 kilowatt hours in size. So basically 30 kilowatt hour battery pack which is quite a big battery pack for the size of this car. And the electric motor will have 75 horsepower, which is only 55 kilowatt. Doesn't sound like much, but actually it's gonna be more powerful than you think because you're gonna have 100% of that power from zero RPM. Yeah, I find my, my EV has a, only 150 kilowatt. What's that, like 210 horsepower? But it actually feels really fast once it gets off the line. It's surprising how quick it is. So usually when you see these horsepower, these kilowatt figures, and you think, oh, that doesn't sound all that great. It's actually much better in the real world than what it sounds. For example, my car, you would think for the size and weight of my car that the, the power wouldn't actually be able to spin the wheels, but it spins the wheels even when you're really moving. Price tag, 60,000 to 100 RMB, 8,800 US dollars to 14,770 US dollars. If you think about the interior space of this car, it is on parity with gasoline powered cars with similar interior space. There is really, I mean, a similar interior size car is a Toyota Yaris. Look at the price of the Toyota Yaris in China. Pretty much spot on same prices. So once again, I keep saying this, gasoline powered cars are pretty much on par with the price of EVs right now in China. And we're gonna see that happen in many other countries around the world. Now, it's already actually starting to happen. If you think about it, China is the start right, of what's going to happen everywhere else in the world. Eventually, the prices we see in China, they'll be pretty much replicated everywhere else. But before then, I mean, look at the prices of now, right now, of Tesla's electric cars. Now, if you buy an EV in the United States, for example, you get a $7,500 discount. Think about it. The Bolt and the Bolt EUV, what's that going to make them? About $22,000 US dollars, yeah? That's a pretty similar price to what you would pay for a similarly sized spec gasoline-powered car. Tesla Model Y, that's a bigger car than you think. You can get one of those for around 40,000 US dollars or just over 42,000 US dollars, I think it is, with the EV incentive. That makes it pretty much on par with similarly specified gasoline powered vehicles. So, when is this car actually coming to market? Well, word is it's April of 2023. I'm going to guess that countries that will get this car first will be probably Southeast Asian countries, possibly Indonesia, Vietnam. Obviously, in China, this will be a hit. Maybe Japan as well. This would be a really good sized car for the Japanese car market. And it looks good. Japanese love stylish looking cars. I, I reckon that even though people are a bit reticent in Japan to buy EVs, that could just be because there's not a lot of supply. Possibly. What are your thoughts on this? Would you consider buying one of these for around 10,000 US dollars with that size battery pack? I reckon you're going to get a range of probably around 300 kilometers with that battery pack, real world range of around 300 kilometers, maybe a little bit more. Now for that price, in my opinion, it's an absolute steal. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. And also, what do you think of the color? Is it just me? Or is it actually kind of a cool looking pink? Thank you for watching my friends. I'll see you again on the next video.